The history of the Philippines from 1898 to 1946 is known as the American colonial period and began with the outbreak of the Spanish-American War in April 1898 when the Philippines was still a colony of the Spanish East Indies and concluded when the United States formally recognized the independence of the Republic of the Philippines. With the signing of the Treaty of Paris on December 10, 1898, Spain ceded the Philippines to the United States. The interim US military government of the Philippine Islands experienced a period of great political turbulence characterized by the Philippine-American War. Beginning in 1906, the military government was replaced by a civilian government, or the Insular Government of the Philippine Islands. Following the passage of the Philippine Independence Act in 1934, a Philippine presidential election was held. In 1935, Manuel L. Quezon was elected and inaugurated as the second president of the Philippines on November 15, 1935. The insular government was dissolved and the Commonwealth of the Philippines intended to be a transitional government in preparation for the country's full achievement of independence in 1946 was brought into existence. After the World War II Japanese invasion in 1941 and subsequent occupation of the Philippines, America and the Commonwealth military completed the recapture of the Philippines after Japan's surrender leading up to U.S. recognition of the Philippine independence on July 4th, 1946. Knee colonialism in the Philippines People often think that the relationship between America and the Philippines is all about democracy, beneficial trade, and shared cultural values as portrayed in popular media. However, this idealized picture hides a history of violent colonization in the Philippines. In simple terms, colonialism is when a country directly controls another, and neo-colonialism is when a country influences another without explicit control. Even though the Philippines is considered a sovereign state, the strongest military presence, exploitative economic practices, and the Filipino people feeling disempowered in their own country suggest ongoing colonial elements creating a new colonial link between the Philippines and America. The connection between the US and the Philippines started after the Spanish-American War in 1898, when America bought the Philippines. This happened along with promises of independence for the Filipinos, but those promises were broken, leading to the Philippine-American War. The US used harsh military tactics to control the Philippines, viewing Filipino civilians as needing control for their own good. Even when military force did not work, the U.S. used education to influence Filipinos. They taught English and American values, creating generations in the Philippines that felt thankful to Western teachers and soldiers. This education helped in pacifying the Philippines more successfully than military actions. The ongoing new colonial relationship involves the economic exploitation of Filipino workers. The Philippines sent laborers around the world for low-paying jobs in poor conditions. Filipino migration to America has roots in this system. The U.S. also supports an empowered Filipino upper class that backs colonial policies. This started with sending wealthy Filipinos to study in America in the early 20th century. The education system in the Philippines today reinforces reliance on foreign capital, keeping economic interests in the hands of the US. The heavy presence of American military bases in the Philippines is another form of neocolonialism. Supporters argue it brings opportunities for social economic mobility, but it often results in exploitation and abuse of local communities. The Visiting Forces Agreement, or VFA, allows American forces back in the Philippines, offering legal protection for crimes committed by American soldiers on Filipino soil, and this created a protected military class. These examples show a continuing knee colonial relationship between the Philippines and America. Four additional bases in the Philippines. The Philippines allowed the US to operate four more additional bases in the Philippines. The locations of four new military bases that the US will gain access to have been identified. These bases, an expanded part of the defense agreement between the two countries, will allow the US to approach Taiwan from the south in the event of war and acts as another part 
of its China containment strategy. One of the strategic intentions of America is to build a base on Balakbak Island as it could provide future support and logistics in any future military operation in the region. Three of the new bases could be used primarily by America to respond to any situation in the Taiwan Strait from the south. This would work alongside their bases to the north of Taiwan, specifically those in Okinawa in southern Japan. In this way, the new bases in the Philippines will fill the gap in the south, which is very important for the implementation of the U.S. containment strategy. Although the Philippines has a dispute with China over maritime sovereignty, from Beijing's perspective, Manila has brought a foreign power to the region. For the Americans, the Philippines is an important springboard for operations against China in the South China Sea and the Taiwan Strait. Because of this, China has already taken retaliatory measures by building up its forces in the South China Sea. Conflict in the South China Sea Territorial disputes in the South China Sea involve conflicting island and maritime claims in the region by several sovereign states, namely China, Taiwan, Brunei, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Vietnam. The disputes involve the islands, reefs, banks, and other features of the South China Sea. In the late 1970s, the Philippines, Malaysia started claiming the Spartly Islands as part of their own territory. On June 11, 1978, President Ferdinand Marcos of the Philippines issued a presidential decree declaring the northwestern part of the Spartly Islands, called the Kalayan Group Island, as Philippine territory. In 1994, China took control of Mischief Reef, which is about 250 kilometers from the Philippine coast. This happened during a competition for energy resources in the Spartleys. China didn't have a presence in the area. The occupation of Mischief Reef marked the first military clash between China and the Philippines. Between the 1990s and 2000s, who controls most of the Spartly and Parasol Islands hasn't changed much. China has full control of the Parasols. In the Spartleys, Vietnam has control over most with 29 features. The Philippines controls 8, Malaysia has 5, and China has control over 5 as well. President Marcos Jr. announcement about initiating talks between the Philippines and Vietnam regarding Vietnamese ships entering the country's exclusive economic zone received limited attention because Vietnam, which asserts ownership of the Spiral Islands, views them as its own sovereign territory. Vietnam doesn't align with the false narrative propagated by American supporters, suggesting that the issues in the South China Sea are primarily caused by China's expansionism. Most people discussing the South China Sea often ignore Vietnam's claims to the Kalayan Island Group, despite having 29 features compared to the Philippines' 10, China's 8. Not much is said about Vietnam. They have set up well-armed posts on converted oil rigs, built military bases on many features, and even equipped some with tanks and missiles. There are concerns they might try to take a poorly defended Philippine island. Vietnam has also created artificial islands by reclaiming 200 hectares of land. Vietnam claims the entire spot lease and the Parasol Islands as part of its sovereign territory. Since 2011, tensions have been rising again in the area. If war breaks out between the United States and China, the South China Sea is the most likely theater. China's disputes with its neighbors over competing territorial claims in the sea, its threats to take back Taiwan by force, and the overall tension in the region after more than a decade of threats, harassment, and military buildups have set the stage for a possible scenario of a major conflict in the South China Sea. Here are potential situations where the two major powers could engage in conflict. Scenario 1. Accidental War In 2027, China pushes to expand its territorial claims to include Second Thomas Shaw, part of the Spirally Islands and only 195 miles from the Philippines. Chinese Marines stage live fire exercise near the Philippine Marine Corps, but the exercise is mistaken for an assault. Philippine Marines return fire, causing casualties, and Philippine warplanes damage Chinese Type 
071 amphibious landing dock. As both sides raid blows, the conflict expands to the Chinese aircraft carrier Shandong conducting airstrikes on Philippines airfields and Chinese cruise missiles, striking military bases across the archipelago. America sees the opportunity to contain China and invokes a mutual defense treaty with the Philippines, sends its naval forces back up by two carrier strike groups and B-1 bombers based in Guam. U.S. and Chinese air and naval forces become directly engaged. The two powers are embroiled in an open-end conflict that no one wanted and no one knows how to stop. Countries allied with the United States like Japan, Australia, and South Korea would join in, and nations supporting China would also be drawn into the conflict. At this stage, the tension goes beyond just the South China Sea. Scenario 2. Taiwan Invasion China thinks Taiwan, an independently governed island close to its coast, is part of China that needs to be under Beijing's control. Taiwan refuses peaceful unification. In 2030, after two decades of preparing, China starts invading Taiwan. America took a chance to get involved in Taiwan by sending its navy. China quickly reacts by sinking American naval vessels. Now, the two major powers are directly engaged in a conflict. After one month, Chinese forces have established a foothold on the island, but are unable to bring in reinforcements due to American submarine sinking transport ships in the Taiwan Strait. Taiwanese forces are under constant bombardment and unable to drive the Chinese into the sea. America uses its military bases in the Philippines to launch missiles towards bases in the South China Sea.